Today I want to talk about how to set up a router because a lot of us have to go through this process and some of us have a hard time doing so. So what better way than to go through a ultimate guide on how to set up a router from unboxing to hooking things up, getting it connected to your modem, and then of course playing around with settings. So this is a brand new router that I've purchased and we're going to start from scratch here. So make sure to smash that like button for me and let's get into it. First, let's unbox things. And as we're opening it up, you'll find a installation guide more than likely. Most routers come with some kind of documentation like so, which will help you actually go through the install process as well. Make sure to reference this because it will give you information like how to log in and what password is used by default on the router. You won't want to throw this away. It'll also give you information important like where to log into once you get your router powered up and going. Anyways, let's check this out. I'll set this aside. And in this router box, what we have is the router itself, which right here is this Netgear router of mine, which is this Netgear router that I purchased. And this process is gonna be similar across all routers. You'll have a power adapter and typically an ethernet cord, probably smaller than this one. This is actually a fair sized one. We'll get rid of the box now and let's get into setting things up. So again, I have the manual here, as well as a power adapter, a small ethernet cord, and the router itself that all came in the box. Let me open this up right here. Very good, here's what things look like unboxed. And now if I turn things over and we really focus in on this router, we'll notice a few things on the back of the router. This is kind of hard to see, but what I'll do is I'll try to get as close to the camera as I can. It says WAN which stands for wireless access network. You'll want to make sure to find this ethernet port. They're typically labeled with a different color and it says WAN. And what else you'll notice is some numbers, one, two, three. It might be labeled differently on your router, but not a big deal. It's signified in a different color because this here is the local area network or LAN. So the difference between the two that we need to understand is that the WAN will allow us to connect up our modem into that port via an ethernet cable and give our Wi-Fi router the capability to connect to the internet and share it across devices. Whereas the LAN only links together computers locally through this router, or you could think of it as just being a switch that allows you to connect to things. All right, now that we got some of the lingo through, let's actually turn this on. What I'll first do is I will use the power adapter to power up this router. And there's this DC barrel plug where I'll plug in to put the other side in a power outlet. All right, and with that plugged in, the next thing I'll do is take the ethernet cord and plug it in as well. At that point, I'll need a computer in order to access a very important page that will help us set up the router even further. If you need a diagram, you'll probably get one with your manual. Look at how they have things set up. As I mentioned before, they take a modem and put it into the WAN port, which is the yellow WAN labeled port, and then they make sure to power the router. You'll need a computer at this point, so let's make sure to get one. For this particular setup, we can use Wi-Fi. There's really two ways of setting this up, and I'll kind of show you both. This cable is usually given to you so you can either connect up your computer or the modem, and in order to do that, you would take and plug this into the yellow port labeled WAN, and then plug this side into your modem. So I got that done in order to get internet access. But another important thing I want to explain is some routers require you to actually plug in and then with this white ethernet cable that I have, I would plug this side into my physical computer. That way I can actually access the setup page for the router. Of course, this depends on your router. So for an example, I would plug these two up together through a dongle and then I would be able to access the page. Again, refer to the manual on this one because newer routers typically allow you to do all the setup via the Wi-Fi, but some force you to use a direct connection to the router, which is a little harder, but not a big deal. Let me show you both methods here. So for the first method that I wanna show you on how to get to the proper browser page, which will help you config your router and set things up properly, well, we're going to use the direct router connection method first. This is where you access the router using a direct connection. All that means is you're going to connect the router up directly to a computer via an ethernet cord. A lot of routers are required to be set up this way. Sometimes it lets you go through the Wi-Fi too. But in this example, I'll first show how to log in via your web browser using direct connection. 
So we talked about having a WAN port, and we also talked about having the three LAN ports on the router that I have. This applies to almost every router. What you wanna do at this point is take one of the LAN ports, so make sure it's not labeled WAN, and connect it directly up to a computer via an ethernet cord. You can take whatever computer you have, as long as it has an ethernet port, and connect one of those LAN ports up. This allows you to get access to your specific configuration page for the router. You'll want to put a static IP address that matches whatever is the default LAN subnet. So for example, if your manual or router says it's on the 192.168.11.1. Something subnet, you'll want to make sure that your static IP contains these three bytes of information in order to be able to access it. You'll want to make sure that this last byte is not the same as your router. So what does that mean? If your router is set to 192.168.1.1, you'll make sure that your computer is not dot one on the end. So let me show you how to do that. All right, and now we're ready to set up a static IP address so we can connect up to that router directly. Open up the start menu and then type in network. This will search for anything by the name of network on your computer. And you'll notice that there's this view network connections in the control panel. We wanna open this up and view all of our current connections. You'll notice that I have a Wi-Fi connection, Bluetooth and virtual connection but what I'm looking for is an ethernet connection. If you can't find which of these adapters your router is connected to, unplug from your computer the ethernet cable and you'll notice one of these go down and plug it back in and you'll notice it come back up and then you'll actually know which ethernet adapter to use to set up settings on. So for example, I know mine's this one. I'm gonna right click on here and hit properties. And then in here, I'm going down to the IPv4 or the internet protocol version four option and either double clicking or hitting properties. In here is where we're going to set up the static IP address in order to connect up to the router's configuration page. And we can do this by hitting use the following IP address. Now, as I mentioned before in my diagram, we'll have to set up an IP address for our computer that is not the router's IP address. I know the router's IP address through the manual is this one right here. So in order to set up this direct connection, I'm going to set this to 192.168.1. Again, remember you can't use the router's IP address, so I'm just going to do something else besides .1. I'm gonna do .5 for mine. And the gateway, I know that's the router, so that's 192.168.1.1. Of course, yours might be different. Yours might have an 11 here, or it might be a completely different subnet. So it's not 192 at the beginning. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's 172 something make sure to refer to the router in the router's manual in order to get this information we're going to talk about another method soon but before we do subscribe below for awesome videos like this that help you go through and really understand the setup process of a router and make sure to share this with somebody who needs some help setting up their own now that we have an ip address i'm going to hit ok and then make sure to hit close on this changes to your static ip address will not get changed unless you do after I hit close, you'll notice this says identifying. That means it's changing things around. And once it goes back to network, that means the changes for that static IP address have been applied. I'm going to launch a terminal real quick. And if I do IP config, this will actually give me some information about my network. What I'll notice is I do in fact have an IP address now for my ethernet adapter. And it's 192.168.1.5. You don't have to do this, but what's nice is you can try pinging the router at this point to confirm you have a connection. If I do ping 192.168.1.1, I should get a response back. And I sure do. This is the router's IP address, and it's realizing that it now has a connection with my computer and giving me a reply. So this is absolutely fantastic. I should be able to connect to the router now and get the config page. Launch whichever web browser you want to launch, and then in the URL, type in the IP address of the router. So for my example, it's 192.168.1.1, and press enter. Now you'll notice one thing, it'll say your connection is not private. This is because the security certificate isn't trusted by your operating system. Not a big deal here. That's just because it can't exchange the proper certificate. You hit advanced and then you hit proceed to this IP address. It says it's unsafe, but this is all local. You're not connected to the internet. You can hit proceed and that will actually load you in to the configuration page. Here are some terms and conditions that you'll have to agree to in order to get to the config page. 
after you do, you're going through the setup process. So congratulations if you made it to this point because you are now ready to configure and set up your router through the browser config page. But I wanna show you a different method as well on how to get here because most modern routers have an easier way. So either skip ahead to looking through configuration or try to look and see if you can use this method if you're having issues. So really the second method is to join that default Wi-Fi network. And in order to do so, what you'll notice on your router is you'll have some information on the back. And for mine, it says Netgear and then some numbers behind it, which represent the Wi-Fi network name or SSID. Look for this and then look for the network key or password. So with those two things noted from the back of the router, then you can actually try and log into this via the Wi-Fi, which is much easier, at least in my opinion. And for the second method connection, I just want to use the Wi-Fi. So all that means is my computer and my wireless router are going to be connected to each other via the default Wi-Fi network. This will have some default network name and SSID, which will help you connect via Wi-Fi to your laptop or desktop computer, whatever has Wi-Fi enabled. So let's go through that method. It's much easier for most people if your router has this capability. So let's take a look at how to do that. First, find your Wi-Fi settings. In the Wi-Fi settings, make sure your Wi-Fi is enabled, and then you can click on show available networks. Scroll down until you find the proper network and then hit connect. Then, as you can see, find the password that's on your router, and you're gonna type this password in because it's a default password. We're gonna change this later, don't worry. So I'm going to type mine in. And if things are properly connected, you'll see this secured connection of your router, whatever its SSID is. And now in my example, I don't need to set a static IP address. Instead, I can access the router page in a different method. Again, we wanna start up a web browser. I wanna try a different link. In my manual, it tells me to go to routerlogin.net. And look at that. Now I am officially in the same point that I was before using Wi-Fi directly. And congratulations if you've gotten this far. Okay, now that we have a connection up to the router, what we can do is go through the setup process. A lot of these routers already have a step-by-step -step configuration process, but we'll go through settings after the fact as well in order for you to understand how to properly set up your router once you have an internet connection. Let's go through this wizard. I'm gonna hit next. And the first thing it's going to do is check and see if we have an internet connection to the outside world. And in this case, as long as you have the WAN port connected up to a modem, so your internet provider's modem, this again is an ethernet connection directly to the WAN port of your router. So this is the router. This is a computer and this is a modem supplied by your internet service provider or ISP. Back to the setup, internet detected, great. I'm gonna hit next on this. Yours might be different, but I think you'll get to something more familiar here in a bit. What's important here is the default password on the back of your router is going to be the current password. Now, to make sure that not everyone can access that router configuration page, you'll need to change the password. Take note of the username and password that you're going to create. Make sure it's not something simple that anyone could guess. Create the password and make absolute sure you write this down. Otherwise, you're gonna be resetting your entire router settings, which would suck. Anyways, in this particular router, it's asking for security questions, which is interesting. I haven't had this before, but for now, I'm going to reset this later. So I'm just going to put in some random information and hit next. Next, I'm being asked about what I want to actually name the wireless network, I'm just gonna put in Savvy Nick for mine. And then the wireless password is going to be the default password for your network that you used earlier to connect to this Wi-Fi network. So I don't want to use that same password. Instead, I wanna create a new pass. So this is the SSID login password. This is what everybody will use in order to log in to your network if you give them the chance to. Basically, this is known as your Wi-Fi password and not the router password. That's what we set up last. So I'm going to create another password for this and save that somewhere as well and hit next. After that, my configuration is complete and my router is checking for updates by itself to make sure that there's no new firmware and there is new firmware. I highly suggest keeping your router upgraded to the latest version of firmware. This helps protect you against security vulnerabilities 
and is a fairly easy process on most routers. Most of you want to make sure to update at this point to get that new firmware, but for now I'm going to skip this option just because I want to show you how to configure things manually. All right, this is exciting because now we're being asked for the password that we set up for the router. This is for login purposes. So it's that user admin, and then I'm just going to put my password in and hit the login button. And in some instances, you'll want to restart this router once you're done going through the setup wizard. Not at all times, but in order for the configuration settings to take effect, it might be necessary. In my case, it was necessary and allowed my configuration to take effect. And here is the page that I got until I restarted that router. Reason being is it actually switched SSIDs. So you can imagine my SSID was something defaulted by Netgear first. And then I changed my SSID to Savvy Nick a moment ago. In order for computers and stuff on this network to realize the new SSID, you'll probably need to restart the router and then things should connect up. Let me just check now. So in this example, notice my Wi-Fi is on. I'm gonna hit show available networks. Now I have this new network called Savvy Nick. I'm gonna connect to it and it's going to ask me for a password again. This is because we set up a new password. Make sure to put your new Wi-Fi password in that you made during the configuration wizard and hit next. That should connect you back up to the router. And at this point, if you do actually have an internet connection, you should be able to test it by going to google.com and congratulations if you made this far you've successfully went through and set up your router now we're going to talk about more advanced setup or if you don't have a wizard how to set things up either way let's go back to the router login page and now it's asking me for a local device password this is the password i set up for the router not my ssid or wi-fi password i'm going to hit the login button and look at the router settings regardless of if you need to set up your router manually or you don't, this is a very good thing to check out anyway, because it will help you set up a more secure router. Notice my status is currently good and going through the wizard helped me set everything up. Fantastic. If it's not, I would first start by going under the internet tab. Yours might be different, look around, and now you can use an advanced setup method in order to set up your internet connection. For example, if your ISP requires a domain name, you can put that in here. You can also try to get your public IP address dynamically from the internet service provider or use a static IP address. This is why going through the setup wizard is usually better. But regardless, after you have your internet connection set up, you can either test it or ping out to like Google or use your web browser to try getting to Google or some other web page that you normally use. And that should tell you whether or not your setup is correct. Typically the router itself is going to have something to test that connection with and tell you if the connection is good. So back to the home page, my status here is being detected and presumably it's good, which it is. Also, I can see how many attached devices I have on my computer. If I wanted to audit any devices that I have on my network, I would go to the attached devices and view anything that's connected to the network. Notice this is a ThinkPad and it's Savvy Nick and the current address that was dynamically allocated to it is this right here. It also has a MAC address and it says it's connected with a five gigahertz wireless connection and it's the only device on my network. If there was some suspicious activity, I could pick up on it here, see devices that had been connected at some point to my Wi-Fi or a direct connection via ethernet and even edit the device and block it from being able to access my network anymore. A very powerful tool. Now we're gonna go to the wireless tab and understand some of these wireless settings so that we understand what options we have available for our wireless setup. We've already set things up during the configuration wizard, but if you haven't, here's where you would set things up. First off, you can enable or disable your wireless connection. Some people don't wanna use a wireless connection, so you can simply disable it. Next is what we spoke about before, the SSID or what other devices on your network see as the Wi-Fi name in order to connect to. If you wanted to change this to something, I'm just gonna call this Wi-Fi Savvy instead of Savvy Nick. And now what would happen is if I apply this, my SSID and my Wi-Fi name is going to get changed to Wi-Fi Savvy. You can also change the type encryption method to make your Wi-Fi even more secure. Read up on these different types of encryption methods in order to really understand the differences. I won't get into that. You can also set up that Wi-Fi password right here, and then also specify what types of bands you want available to devices. Do you want both the 2.4 gigahertz range and the five gigahertz range, or just one or the other? You can actually set that here in almost every router. 
Finally, uh, enable SSID broadcast. This means that all devices can see the SSID and try connecting to it. Otherwise, if you disable this, only devices that know the SSID will be able to search for it. It's really a privacy matter. If you want the public to be able to see your Wi-Fi connection or not, but it does make it a little harder to connect up to your Wi-Fi. Anyways, if I hit apply here, what will happen is these wireless settings will take effect and I would have a new password with a new SSID. Because you're changing the SSID or the password, you'll have to restart the router in order for things to take effect. Your router might tell you to do so. Just make sure to do that if necessary. Okay, now we're going to the advanced tab so I can explain a few more things here. I do encourage you to at least check out the advanced tab because you can go through things like the setup wizard or more advanced setup. And probably the most important thing is run a firmware update. In administration here, I have firmware update. And what we can do is hit the check button. And what will happen is the router itself is going to ping out through your internet and see if there is a update. And it does say here, new firmware is found. Do you want to update the firmware? More than likely, you do want to update this to make sure that you don't have any vulnerabilities on your router. These things get regularly updated, so it's a good thing to check this every once in a while and is a very important reason on why I wanted to show you the advanced tab. If you want to get back to the internet setup, we already viewed this once. We also have a wireless setup. We again viewed this as well. WAN setup, LAN setup. LAN setup can be important. If you want to change the IP address of your local area network, you can here. So this is the IP address of the router. Notice it's dot one and it has a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. What this could do is actually set up a whole new IP address, which I'll be doing later, but I'll just show you, for example, um, this would change the IP on the LAN side to be 10.0.67.1 for the router, meaning when you access the router from now on, it would be 10.067.1, and any device that belongs on the LAN will get an assigned IP address of something under that same subnet, so 10.0.67.x, some number assigned by the router. You can also set the subnet IP mask to something else, let's say you don't want the full range, you could maybe do dot .128 at the end, and that will limit the amount of devices that can actually connect to your network. It'll basically have the amount of devices that can connect to the network. Anyways, I'll let you do a little bit of research there if you have some special network setup that you wanna make for your local area network. And by local area network here, I'm really just talking about anything on these three ports here, at least on mine. Yours might have more ports for whatever. That's all I'm talking about. Well, I want to congratulate you for making it this far in the video. You now officially have your router set up. You can also help others set up their routers. And now you have a really good understanding of how things work, how even the advanced setup goes, and how to set up a typical router configuration. One last important thing I want to mention is how to reset a router. This is important if you get something messed up. It's pretty easy to actually reset these things to factory settings. If something gets garbled up and you can't connect to your router, there usually is a small reset button. Let me zoom things in. You'll notice this little pinhole right here that says reset. That will actually take things back to the factory reset settings. What I wanna mention is in your manual somewhere, it probably tells you how to factory reset. And typically it's done using this pinhole method here. What you'll do is you'll take something like a paperclip or a pin, something, and you would actually put that pin right in this pinhole and press down on this for 15 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it takes according to your manual, and that would completely reset the settings inside this router. All the default settings get loaded back in, and now you can start from square one and fix whatever you had messed up. Well, now that you're an advanced router user, let me know how things went in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux programming and setup videos. I've been really wanting to do this one for quite a while now, and hopefully you consider this the ultimate guide to setting up a router and that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another one.